بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله uh, Continuing with matters that are included in believing in the hereafter Last time we stopped at the Sirat and passing the Sirat and the different types of people and uh, the different conditions of people whilst passing the Sirat. So people eventually will pass the Sirat. After that, they will be held, they will be stopped at a, a, a bridge, another bridge between hell and Jannah. So that Allah Azza wa Jal can uh, settle accounts between people, those who wronged others, it will be that time when accounts will be settled. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu said, after the believers are saved from the fire of hell, they will be stopped on a bridge between Jannah and hellfire so that mutual retaliation will be established among them to settle scores. Those who wronged each other, Allah Azza wa Jal, in dunya, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal will stop them at that bridge to uh, establish mutual uh, retaliation. And then after that, when they're cleansed and purified from their sins, from the wrongdoings that they have conducted against others, they will be permitted to enter Jannah. Then the Prophet ﷺ swore, he said, I swear by the one in whose hand the soul of Muhammad is, والسلام, they will know their places in Jannah better than they knew their places, their homes, their dwellings in this life. So that's the other uh, or another aspect uh, of belief included in believing in uh, the hereafter. Now we come to a very important point, which is uh, intercession. Now intercession happens in different places and at different times, but I have collected it all in one point so it, that it is easier for you guys to uh, understand and grasp and write, uh, inshallah. Now, the first and the most important uh, and the special type of intercession is that which is granted to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and it's a general one to all humans, not only to his nation. And this is mentioned in the book of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari. This narration or this uh, story that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us about this great intercession he has uh, is mentioned in different books and some narrations are long, and others are shorter. I decided to take the shorter one because it serves the purpose and we can save time to uh, allocate to other points. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was invited as uh, reported by Abu Hurairah. He said we were invited to eat with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he was offered the arm of the animal. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to like that part of the animal. So he took it and he took a bite from it. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day of resurrection, I will be the chief and master of all people. Do you know why? Then he started telling why. He said, Allah azza wa jal will gather all people from beginning to end, all creation, in one plane level. And then anyone can see them. The sight can penetrate all people because there is not an obstacle uh, and, uh, that, that would prevent his eyesight and because the place is leveled. It's, it's a leveled plane earth. And the one who is making an announcement can make all of them hear. Then people start suffering. The Prophet ﷺ said, 
the sun will draw closer to people and they will start going through hardships. So people start talking to one another. They, they would say, don't you say, don't you see what we're going through? Don't you see the miserable straight state that we're in? The dreadful condition and situation we're going through. Why don't you look for someone who would intercede for you with your Lord? So some people would say, let's go to your father, Adam. So they would go to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and say, oh Adam, you are the father of humans. Allah Azza wa Jal created you with his own hand and he breathed in you a soul or the soul that he created for you. He commanded the angels to prostrate for you and he made you live in Jannah. Why don't you intercede for us with your Lord? Don't you see the dreadful, dreadful situation and miserable condition we're in? Adam alayhi salatu wasalam would say, My Lord has become angry to a level which he has never reached before and he will never reach afterwards. We ask Allah's protection. And he had forbidden me from approaching the tree, but I disobeyed. Nafsi, nafsi. I am more deserving of intercession. I am worried about my own rescue and salvation. Go to someone else. Go to Nuh. Then they would go to Nuh and they would tell him the same thing. Oh Nuh, you are the first of all messengers to, earth, to people on earth. Allah Azza wa Jal named you, meaning in the Quran, a grateful slave. Don't you see the situation we're in, the miserable condition we have reached? Why don't you intercede for us with your Lord? Then he would say, my Lord has become angry to a level or a state which he had never reached before and he will never reach after my own salvation. I am the more deserving of intersection, of intercession. Go to the Prophet meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So people would go to him alayhi salatu wasalam and request his intercession with, uh, for them with his Lord. He alayhi salatu wasalam said, so I go and I prostrate underneath the throne of Allah azza wa jal and I will be told, O oh Muhammad, raise your hand. Intercede and you will be allowed intercession and ask, and you will be given. This is the special intercession granted to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for all humanity, so that Allah azza wa jal would start holding people to account. Another intercession is the intercession of the believers for another believer before he is uh, thrown in hell, and this is reported by Imam Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whenever a Muslim dies and then uh, 40 people, 40 men pray the funeral prayer for him or on him who do not associate anything with Allah Azza wa Jal except that Allah Azza wa Jal will allow them to intercede for him. The scholar said, this intercession happens or takes place before he is thrown to fire and they intercede and Allah Azza wa Jal saves him from it. Another type of intercession is interceding so that some people's levels are raised in Jannah after they're admitted into Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقُنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Those who believe and whose descendants follow them in faith, we will elevate their descendants to their rank. They will be raised in rank. And we will not decrease the reward of their deeds. Included in this, or what substantiates this, is the situation with the wives of the Prophet 
They are certainly not at the level of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but they will be with him in Jannah. So he will raise their status to his status in Jannah. Another type of intercession is the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so that Allah azza wa would allow a group of believers to enter Jannah without prior reckoning. This is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. It's a long narration. Part of that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will be told, O Muhammad, raise your head, ask and you'll be given, intercede and you will be allowed to intercede. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so I raise my head and I say, O oh, my Lord, my nation, my nation. Then it will be said to him, O oh Muhammad, allow from your nation some people to enter Jannah from the right door without prior reckoning. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us all amongst these people. Allahumma ameen. There is a special type of intercession that is granted to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and it is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam alone which is his intercession to his uncle Abu Talib because of his support to him in dunya though he died a non-believer this is in al in al bukhari and muslim <coughs> the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said he, meaning Abu Talib, will be raised to a shallow place in fire. After he was in a, in a deep area or spot in, in fire, he will be raised to a shallow spot or place in the fire of hell. Now, look at the description. He is in a shallow place. But the Prophet ﷺ said, his brain will be boiling and he is in the least type of torture in Jahannam. We ask Allah's protection from Jahannam altogether. Allahumma ameen. Now, we say that this is an intercession because in principle, a disbeliever is supposed to have a much severer uh, torture or punishment. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَهُمْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمَا لا يقضى عليهم فيموتوا ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها. Those who disbelieve will be in the fire of hell. Death is not decreed for them, so they may die. And this is the following section or segment is uh, the the uh, point behind the verse. Nor will its torment be lightened for them. So in principle, a disbeliever, when he is thrown into the fire of hell, his torture does not decrease. It continues and it increases. But in this case, because of the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ, he was raised into a shallow level in the fire of hell. We ask Allah's protection. Tayyip. Another type is also for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the intercession so that people may enter into Jannah. We ask Allah the highest level of Jannah, Allahumma Ameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Muslim, he said, I will be the first one to intercede so that people may enter Jannah. In another narration, he, and it's also in the book of Muslim, he said, I will come to the gate of Jannah on the day of resurrection and take, seek permission to open for the, day to, the gate to be opened. So the gatekeeper would say or would ask, who are you? He وسلم, said, I will say Muhammad. So the keeper would say, I was commanded not to open to anyone before you. Another type is an intercession granted to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that he may take out of the fire of hell those who had committed the major grave sins in dunya. It is in the book of Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
every prophet had a dua which Allah Azza wa Jal honored. So every prophet hastened and supplicated Allah Azza wa Jal with it. Except that I kept it as an intercession for my nation so that I can intercede for them on the day of resurrection. And it will be, meaning it will be fulfilled by the will of Allah for those who die from my nation without associating anything with Allah or anyone with Allah. In another narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, my intercession will be for those from my ummah who had committed the major grave sins. Now, this is a very important point. And I want your attention here, brothers and sisters. This is an intercession that will be given or granted to the believers to intercede to other believers. In the book of Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's a long narration. Part of it say, says, after the believers are admitted into Jannah, they would look around and say, O oh, oh, our Lord, we have our brothers who used to, be, to fast with us, and pray with us, and perform Hajj with us, and in another nation, perform Jihad with us. We don't see them. And in the, in the other narration, our joy will not be completed without them being with us. So Allah will tell them, go and take out of fire anyone you recognize. Allahu Akbar. And they will take out a huge number of people, which fire has burnt them uh, to their knees or lower. Uh, one of the scholars used to say to his uh, students, based on, on this narration, my dear students, look for me in Jannah. If you don't find me, please intercede with your Lord for me so that you can take me out of the fire of hell. Al-Hassan al-Basri used to say, make sure you have a lot of pious friends, for they will benefit you on the day of resurrection, in the hereafter. They will intercede for you. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to admit us into Jannah, without having to be interceded for. Allahumma ameen. The intercession, another type, the intercession of angels and prophets. This is reported by Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, people would fall on top of each other when they are passing the sirat, meaning into uh, the fire. Just, just as butterflies fall into fire, a lit fire. And Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted, by virtue of His mercy, will save whomever He wills. And then He will allow or permit the angels and the prophets and the martyrs to intercede. So they intercede and they take out of fire a lot of people. And then they intercede again and they take a lot, uh, uh, another group of people. And they will intercede the third time. And they will uh, get a lot of people until there is not a person in whose heart the weight of a particle or an ant worth of faith, except that they have taken him out. In the narration of Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the prophets would uh, intercede, the angels would intercede, and the believers would intercede, 
And then the exalted Allah says, now the only thing remaining is my intercession. In the narration that is in Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal says, now it is only the most merciful who has to intercede. And then he takes a handful out of fire from people who have never done a good deed in their lives. They had turned into the fire of hell. Their bodies had turned into charcoal. And then he will cast them into a river called the river of life. On the outskirts of paradise. They will grow just as a seed grows. We ask Allah's protection from the fire of hell. Allahumma amin. This was a, uh, a list of the different types of intercessions that would take place uh, in the hereafter. The next point or aspect of uh, faith or included in belief in the hereafter is to believe in Jannah and in Nar, in paradise and in the fire of hell. To believe that they exist now and to believe that they will remain forever. There is no end to them. Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared Jannah, paradise, for His pious believers to eternally enjoy a blissful life in, in it. And he uh, has, on the other hand, prepared the fire of hell to punish those who disobey or disbelieve. Regarding the believers, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَلًا Indeed, those who have believed and done righteous deeds, they will have the gardens of Firdaus as an accommodation where they will be forever, never desiring anywhere else. And as for the disbelievers, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Those who disbelieve, and deny our signs or verses will be the residents of the fire. They will be there forever, eternally. There is no end to that torture. We ask Allah's protection. The last point in today's session is to believe that the believers will see their Lord in the hereafter we will be able to see Allah in the hereafter. And this is the greatest favor and blessing the believers will enjoy in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاضِرَةٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاضِرَةٌ On that day, some faces will be radiant and bright, and they will be looking at their Lord. They will actually see their Lord. Allah Azza wa Jal says in another verse, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادًا For those who do good, Allah will have for them the finest reward and even more. The finest reward was uh, interpreted or explained by the scholars to be Jannah. <coughs> <coughs> and what is more, what is meant by even more, is looking at the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself explained it, as reported by Muslim, Rahmatullahi Ali. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when people enter Jannah, Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted, will say, do you desire anything else that I can add? I can increase you more in the bliss.
they would say, did you not make our faces bright and admitted us into Jannah and saved us from the fire of hell? Then Allah Azza wa Jal will remove the veil. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min fadlika al-azim. Allah would remove the veil and people will be able to see his face. And then the Prophet wasallam said, people were not given and will not be given anything dearer to them than looking at their Lord's face. And then he recited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَ Which is the verse we started with. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who see Allah Azza wa Jal in Jannah the most because people will differ in the frequency they see Allah as in different narrations by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who see Allah Azza wa Jal the most. Allahumma ameen. And we will conclude with this inshaAllah so that we do not exceed the time.